Coaching League of Legends at the professional level probably has some of the most ambiguous duties that you could imagine. Compared to traditional sport, where there is a solidified structure and long legacy of coaches with historical success, it's really hard to know what a coach actually does in a game like League of Legends. Even to this very day, every team does it differently, and each team's interpretation of what a coach is supposed to bring to the table is not the same. At this point, League is still too young to have a tried and true methodology for good coaching at the team level, but there are some commonalities across the most successful coaches that teams consistently look back to and look out for in their candidates. I've asked and researched professionals within the space to help provide insight into what they look for into the best coaches, and they can be defined into the four pillars of coaching. The purpose of this video is to help inform you of these pillars and truly break down what goes into finding and building some of the greatest coaches that League has ever produced. Much of this information comes with an interview I had with Parth Naidu, one of the most coveted League of Legends coaches within the NAC. By the way, if you really like this video, would appreciate it, like and sub. Now let's get started. Let's quickly define the purpose of the four pillars model as well as why each of these four components are so important. The point of the four pillars is to describe the four main areas of knowledge or expertise that a professional league coach can have in order to bring value to a team. The ideal coach needs to be capable in all four respects, but more often than not, they will specialize in just one or two of these areas. In no particular order, there are game knowledge, the most commonly interpreted yet most commonly misunderstood component of coaching, the systems of delivering information, which revolves around structuring reviews and creating a process for moving your team from point to point, leadership, which involves natural leadership qualities, and the ability to set a strategic direction for your team, and actually the health and fitness side, which is the fundamentals and studying factors outside of the game to help optimize things. Diet, sleep, exercise, promoting these things for your players. The key thing to notice here is how varied each of these components actually are. By far the biggest misconception within the coaching space is that there is an extremely high emphasis on the game knowledge portion itself. While it is undoubtedly very helpful for coaches to be able to provide their own input in terms of game knowledge, many up and coming coaches in the game think it is their entire being to sit down, talk about game concept, and just push that for players when that couldn't be further than the case. This doesn't mean that it's not important, it's just that it's very much idolized when there's three other very important factors that come into play here. Being able to provide a net benefit to the team in some shape or form in terms of game knowledge can still be a great asset though. Many teams can and will appreciate alignment on major game concepts, differing opinions on draft, or getting your five players to work together in a new way. The reality is, however, that this is the one area where teams likely need the least amount of assistance. Many players do have an incredible amount of game knowledge and expertise, and in many cases, if the coach is better in this aspect than the players, then they'd probably just be a player instead. This is where the other aspects come in. Many of the hottest players come into the scene with very strong knowledge of game concepts, but they're most definitely an unpolished piece. Put up to five of these pieces together, and you have a team that probably has a lot of work they need to be doing. One of the roles of coaches is to be that facilitating piece and to help move the ship of the team along. This is the idea of the systems pillar. Coaches need to be able to build a strong structure for their players so that they can make the most of their practice. In order to build a proper process for improvement, you as a coach need to create that path for your players so that they both know what area of improvement they are striving for, but also lead them in the right direction in terms of giving them very specific, actionable things to improve for, as well as criteria and good methods to keep them accountable for this improvement. This can be as simple as giving a player specific goals that they can look for to base their play on in order to improve and then giving them proper metrics to honestly evaluate themselves on to build that. Here's a basic example. I want my jungle to communicate enemy pathing information ahead of an objective, and when they need resources at what time. To hold the jungler accountable for this, give them a metric such as make sure to speak about pathing goals or have a conversation about where to play on the map 90 seconds before it happens. Then, in review, you could check the VOD, see what the player actually said and thought about with their team, and then contrast that against the goal and identify any gaps there. From that point, you work on the major factors that contribute to those gaps and aim to reduce them. The next pillar of coaching is one that can really define what the coach skill set is asking for and can really be a big factor as to why a good league player and a good league coach are not the same thing. Having strong leadership in a league team is defined by the ability to put the team in a strong strategic direction. This portion technically has some flexibility because this is where typically coaches can vary in their value adds depending on their background. Some coaches have a great history in statistical data or model building and can be extremely insightful in terms of finding new tech or providing solid reasons to play a certain way. Other coaches might instead be extremely focused in the psychological aspects of things or might be able to provide value in putting your five pieces together. The key thing to keep in mind in this case is to consistently bring on a positive impact to your team. By doing so, this also helps build rep among your team so that they can understand what you bring to the table. You really shouldn't overstep your boundaries, or else you'll potentially lose whatever value you had perceived to have brought on in the first place. Basically, if you aren't a health specialist, you shouldn't try to be one just because the concept of it might sound appealing to the team. Play to what makes you special as a coach, own it, 
and then fill the gaps with other individuals on your staff to round out your competitive program. The most surprising component that more and more teams are focusing on is the aspect of optimizing factors outside of playing the game itself. The reality is, becoming a top-level performer in the League of Legends now requires you to think about unlocking your highest potential performance and revolving every part of your life around this. All of the other pillars, all of the time you spend practicing and honing yourself are not going to matter if you aren't mentally or physically in an appropriate state to improve. You, as a coach, need to instill these factors into your players, help them understand the benefits of this, and build strong, lasting habits into them so they can incorporate it into their lifestyle. As much as you can study and grind the game itself, there is an upper limit to how much you can really invest there before factors like burnout or literal injuries come into play. Many, many players in the field have had opportunities taken away from themselves because they were unable to build these habits in time. By giving players time to form these habits now, you not only form a method of sustainable, productive practice, but you're also setting them up for a potentially long career of success. These four components and areas of League of Legends coaching go very much hand in hand to create a cohesive and competitive program. Every one of these components contributes just as much as the last, and because of this, the best league coaches will be able to provide insights in pretty much all four areas. This could be through their own expertise, and this could be through the enlistment of others to help facilitate this. However, every top level team needs to find some way to have this happen. Hopefully this was an insightful video to y'all and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay fresh.